Hi, welcome to the class. Today we will start a new unit, and the name of the unit is dual nature of matter and radiation. So earlier we have studied radiation means light. This means light. So earlier we have studied the nature of light. In this class or in this chapter we will be discussing dual nature of matter as well. But before starting that, we will understand a phenomenon. By name, photoelectric effect, and this phenomenon is explained by the particle nature of light. So this is explained by the particle nature of light. And before this, we have studied interference and diffraction, which are explained on the basis of the nature of light so photo means what photo is something related to photon and this is related to light and what type of light again particle nature of light now you know that whenever light travels in the form of particle it travels in the form of small packets of energy and these packets of energy are known as photons packets of energy and each photon has an energy of E is equals to H nu. <coughs> where is H? Where H is Planck's constant and nu is frequency. So this is how it works, right? Now, photoelectric effect is defined as the emission of the electrons from a metal surface when a light strikes with the metal surface so whenever a light strikes with the metal surface and emission of electron happens through the surface this is what we call photoelectric emission photoelectric effect and when the electron moves they make something known as photoelectric current right so that is the photoelectric effect now what happens is you need a certain frequency of the light, you need a certain frequency of this photon, of this light, right, in order to eject. So there is a minimum amount of frequency which these photons should have and that is what we call new dot and it is what we know as threshold frequency. Now what is threshold frequency? It is the minimum amount of frequency which the photon should have in order to eject the electrons from the surface. So threshold frequency is the minimum amount of frequency which any photon should have in order to eject or emit the electrons from the surface. Right? So that is new one. So suppose giving an example, we have a light, a photon of energy new of frequency new which is less than new naught. And then we have mu which is equal to mu naught and then we have mu greater than mu naught. So can you tell me in which case the emission of electron will take place and in which case the emission of electron will not take place? So you are quite sure that this here emission of electron will not take place because the frequency of the photon or the light is less than something known as threshold frequency. In this case, the emission of electron will take place and in this case, the emission of electron will take place. Now, the point is, what is the difference between these two? Is there any difference? Answer is yes, there is a difference. What is that difference? So, that difference is, in this case, the electron will be emitted at the surface and it will not move. The electron will not move at all. It will stay at the surface, but it will not move. Here, this new that is the frequency of the energy will be divided into two part one part is given to the electron to come out of the surface and that energy now i started talking about the energy i'm talking about this energy i'm not talking about any more th about this frequency of the light i'm talking about the energy h nu it means two part of h nu will be there one part will help the electron to come on the surface and remaining part will become the maximum kinetic energy of this electron. So it means in this case the electron will have a kinetic energy also. 
whereas in this case it will just come out at the surface okay here other than coming out at the surface electron will have some kinetic energy as well now this new h new which is energy will have two parts one is what we call w and then remaining will become maximum kinetic energy now what is w w is something which we call work function work function right so work function is the minimum amount of energy required to take out the electron out of the surface so that is what what work function is so work function is the minimum amount of energy to take the electron out of the surface that is what work function is and further if i write and yes please keep one thing in mind that this equation is known as einstein's photoelectric equation so this w the value of this is h nu not plus half mv square max <coughs> this is one more version of this equation and if i further write it you can send it that side it will become h common nu minus nu not is equal to k max this is one form of the equation and i want all of you to remember this that h is equals to k max upon nu minus nu not this we will be using uh, uh, in the next class maybe and that's why this is important for you all to understand now guys one thing you should understand that we have studied potential and potential is work done per unit charge now how much charge the electron has the electron has a charge of e So work done will be e is the charge of electron. That is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90 coulomb. So it will be e. So what is e? Work done, right? W is equals to e and work done by the electron. And you know that this work will get stored in the form of kinetic energy in the electron. So I can write this as k is equals to e. Now what is the potential? Now imagine that one electron is coming towards you and you want to stop that electron. How do you stop it? By applying positive potential or negative potential? So answer is by applying a negative potential. So there is, if I apply, if I make this potential to be negative, the electron will stop. So basically what you are stopping is the kinetic energy of the electron. You are stopping the electron, electron is moving, electron is some kinetic energy and you are stopping the electron that is you are stopping the kinetic energy of the electron by applying a negative potential. And when you do that, that negative potential, this V0 is the negative potential and it is known as a stopping potential. Stopping potential. So this is the negative potential which you apply in order to stop the motion of the electron and therefore when I do it I write k max is equal to e v naught why do I write v naught because this is the negative potential to stop the electron so you have to take the total kinetic energy possessed by or the maximum kinetic energy possessed by the electron therefore we write it v naught is equal to k max I hope this point was clear and this formula k is equal to e has come from here and when you stop the potential by applying the maximum uh, negative potential that becomes k max is equal to e v naught i could use this here and if i use this here what it will become h nu minus nu naught instead of k max i can write e v naught and if i do that i send it down there and i bring it here h upon e is equal to v naught upon nu minus this is another important equation and i think we can plot the graphs as well now okay so what i am going to do using these two equations this one and this one i am going to plot a graph and i am going to tell you what is going to happen if this if we use this einstein photoelectric equation and try to do it i hope you understood about threshold frequency the work function these are important things stopping potential and all this now let us plot the graph and 
first graph I am going to plot is of kinetic energy and frequency is of kinetic energy and frequency so it is obvious that we have something known as threshold frequency if our frequency is less than threshold frequency there will be no emission of electrons if there is no emission of electrons hence no kinetic energy because the first part of the energy or the frequency goes into taking out the electron that is done once the electron is out the remaining part of the energy h nu the remaining part of h nu becomes the kinetic energy and now since the electron is out here now the remaining kinetic energy, remaining frequency remaining frequency from here to here that is the remaining frequency this difference of frequency will become the kinetic energy that is the maximum kinetic energy so this is k max so obviously if this part is k max this part will be k max if i try to calculate the slope slope will be you all know that slope is equals to tan theta tan theta means perpendicular upon base Mu minus mu naught. And you already know that k max upon mu minus mu naught is equal to slope. But you know that k max upon mu minus mu naught is equal to h. And therefore, the slope of this graph, what graph? Kinetic energy versus frequency gives you h, which is Planck's constant. So the slope of this graph gives me h Planck's constant, right? So this was an important graph. Also, the same I can do for this as well. And if I do it here, you all could understand very easily that this is frequency again, and here now instead of kinetic energy, I shall do potential V. Again, up till this point, nothing will happen. After this, kinetic energy, and this is V not, new not, sorry, new frequency. And you know that this point has to be stopping potential, which is the negative potential. Actually, it should be down there, negative potential. But let us take this way only, as of now, just to understand. And if this is the negative potential, then this has to be negative potential. Again, calculate the slope. What will come? Slope is equal to tan theta. And if you do tan theta, then it will be v naught upon mu minus mu naught. If you look here, v naught upon mu minus mu naught, it means the slope of what graph? Potential versus frequency. The slope of potential versus frequency graph gives you h by e. Whereas the slope of k kinetic energy versus frequency graph gives you h. So these were the graphs which we drew from the um, Einstein's photoelectric equation. Also, we understood about threshold frequency, stopping potential. As well as work function. So these are the important terms and these are the important formulas. These two graphs are important. And uh, next we'll take up these things in the next class. Thank you.